You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Why? Proprietor of the best tea rooms in Yorkshire and only tea bags. Well, it's never worth making a proper pot just for me. It's always worth making time over the pleasurable things in life. I think you've given me enough of those to last quite a while. You mean that's it? Well, it is for now. You've got to go to the club. I've got to show my face in the tea rooms. One night. That's all we managed. When we could have had a fortnight. You'd have only got in the way on holiday. Alice and I had a wonderful time on our own. I'm beginning to get a touch peeved about how often you keep saying that. You know, some people would have been quite miffed about what had happened. Well, I'm hardly in a position to complain. I'm your mistress, not yeah, your Yeah, even so, the way I left you, I mean... It's... The holiday would have been a thousand times better if you'd been there. Especially after last night. But if you had to go back to your wife instead of coming away with us, then... It's something I'll have to get used to. But you didn't even ask what was so important. Not even made a sly dig. I know I would have. I've uh, got to get Alice off to school. If you fancy some property, I know a nice little place. Two minutes walk away. Now, do you fancy a meal out tonight? Oh, um. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sure. Are we celebrating being back together? Well, I thought it would give us a chance to talk. Talk. Okay. Listen, we've not sorted anything out. We split up because I wanted a baby and you didn't. I haven't changed my mind. Do you think I'd still be here if I hadn't? I've had a lot of time to think about it and, well, I was frightened before about what it all meant. But I love you. And who better to have your children with than someone you love? <laughs> I don't suppose there's any point in me mentioning that Mandy's away, I'm lonely, and that three's company, two's just rubbing my nose in it. <laughs> I don't suppose there's any point in me mentioning that you've circled the calendar for tomorrow with Mandy's back, scrawled against the date. So? Would you ask um, Pavarotti to sing without exercising his larynx or uh, Robert De Niro to act without getting into the soul of the character? <laughs> oh, who could resist an offer like that? Not me. <laughs> if he gives himself up now, Citizens advice they like is not to get away with the fine. And if he doesn't, if he gets six months, who's going to explain that to Uncle Zach? Well, he can't stay here. I mean, living inside for the rest of his life is worse than prison. He'll go loopy. <sighs> well, you know what I mean. <sighs> I still say wait until Zach gets back. No. I'm as good as Sam's mum now, and I'll decide what's best for him. And what's best for him is that we get this sorted. <laughs> What are you two whispering about? Oh, whether to call them. What are you doing? When you said put spaghetti away, I thought I'd just have to bung a tin in cupboard. This is real spaghetti, and ask again. Okay. What are you doing? Cutting it into bits the right size. Like my mum makes. How are you gonna get it all in pan if I don't? It bends, Sam, when you put it in the water. <laughs> yeah, right. And they reckon I'm thick. Hot and police. I'd like to report the whereabouts of a fugitive. No, he's in South America, isn't he? No, it's uh, Sam Dingle. And he's. No, he's not dangerous. Not unless you stick a spaghetti. <laughs> I suppose so. I'll ask him. He said they're a bit short on cars at the moment, so will you walk down later? You really enjoy this, don't you? I'd rather spend the day with you. I do want to know, you know... What? What it was that stopped you coming with us. And if I told you it was work? I believe you. No, you wouldn't. No, but I'd say I did. It was one of the children, George, appendix. They rushed him to hospital. And you thought I'd kick up a fuss about that? I'd have kicked up more of a fuss if you hadn't gone. Oh, you really deserve better than me, you know. Oh, I don't know. I'm happy with this. It's not perfect, but it's, um, pretty good. So, when you back? Uh, I'll call you. Oh, I see. So you've had your wicked way, and now it's, uh, I'll call you. I may have had my wicked way, but I haven't had my toasted tea cake yet, or my pot of java.
Fancy an early lunch, Billy? Suits me. Yeah. Check the Land Rover. What, sir? What's going on? I just remembered something I got to do. You finished already? No, I need some money. Oh, Jack, believe me if I got it, No, mate. I mean from the bank. Uh, Sarah's out. There's a spare checkbook in my bedside cabinet. Oh, why don't you just ask her? Think about what you've just said. Yeah. How are you going to get in, though? She's changed all the locks. Well, she was always on at me about fixing that window. Catch is broken. Where should we go tonight? Out of the village for a change. Mm. OK, you book, I'll drive. Excellent. Well, if you decide to have your baby, you'll have to give up drinking and then you can drive me everywhere. Until I get too fat to sit behind the wheel. <laughs> oh. Listen, if you think we're going to go out so you can get plastered while I sit bloated, uncomfortable and sober, think again. Zoe, I am not some unsympathetic husband. I do have some idea of what it'll be like. If you really want to know what it's like, I say trying to force a bowling ball down your nose is about right. <laughs> Have I just missed the joke? No, we're just discussing what having a baby's like. Oh, well, from my end, it's pretty good. Nine months later, when you give birth, it's supposed to be a bit gory, though. Oh. You must have realised when you come back, the police will be looking for you. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. This is the same police who said, oh, can the dangerous fugitive please pop down to the station at a more convenient time? Yes, well... So, the likelihood is that if you hadn't rung them, they might not have bothered about it. Would you mind not talking about me as if I weren't there? Hey, mate, as somebody who don't know not about this, do you reckon you can trust the police? Well, thin as you ask. They're a bunch of vicious pillocks who stitch up their own granny if it meant getting a backhand off some villain. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, not an entirely unprejudiced view of the boys in blue, is it? Scumbuckets, a lot of them. That one you spoke to, he were nice, weren't he? Yes, he were. You take no notice of him. Yeah, in fact, uh, on his day off, he, he was mentioning to Lisa he doubles as the tooth fairy. It's him, is it? I've been waiting 15 years to meet him. Took me two best teeth and left me five per cent of coin with a bit of chewing gum stuck to it. Used. <sighs> Jack! I can't believe this. Jack, get out of there, quick! What's going on here? Just calm down, Sarah. What are you doing? I needed some money. Couldn't have a conversation about it, could we? Well, it's a pity you didn't ask, isn't it? Because I drew all the money out of that account. It's somewhere where you can't touch it. Well, you've got no right! I've got every right, Jack. You lost all rights to me, my children and everything else the moment you slipped that sad body of yours between Rachel's sheets. I hate you. You're disgusting! Hey! Did you really think I'd leave anything for you to get your slimy hands on? You've taken everything! Taken everything and smashed it! Well, I'm gonna do the same to you! Just leave it, Jack. You'll only make things worse. She can't take all the money. Everything. Get a solicitor. It's the only way, mate. I'm only surprised this lasted as long as it did! Didn't you get a headache? Didn't your back stop playing you up? And have you ever thought why I needed somebody else? I've thought of nothing else! Now I realize why. Because you need someone who doesn't know how pathetic you are. Has he hurt you? Has he done anything but hurt me? I can sort him, you know. No. Leave him. He's never going to have the chance to hurt me again. It's my turn now. What if they charge me with something else? You know, I like wearing them disguises and that since I came back. Oh, yeah. Sandingle. 
I charge you with impersonating Sherlock Holmes for wearing a deer stalker. The entire SAS regiment for wearing a balaclava and a complete prat for wearing them daft specs. I thought I looked all right in them. You looked best when you wore that balaclava back to front. Sam, only the style police would charge you for what you wore. OK. You wait till your dad gets home. No. I won't. I've got to act like a man now. Make me own... What's it? Decisions. Cock-ups. That's acting like a man. Ta. See you later. Where are you going? I'm going to do what a man's got to do. Well, go and do it in the house. You don't want to be done for indecent exposure and all. I'm going to give myself up. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. You didn't mean to do the crime, though. Don't I? Oh. Just go, Sam. I'm proud of you. Will you do me spaghetti for me supper? Bolognese! Not you. Lisa. There's a tin of shapes. Spaceships and that. Proper spaghetti. I keep finding stuff I don't recognise. It's been so long since we've seen so much of it. What's the bedding? All the junk will be intact and something precious will be smashed to smithereens. <laughs> of course, if it's those terrible plates, your Aunt Marge left. Becky. Hey, this is a new start. A new beginning. We all agreed. All that stuff's in the past. She's not dead, Tony. We gave her away. No. We decided it was better if Jerry was adopted. For Emma's sake. Well, for all our sakes. Yes, but look at this place. It's a family home. In 18 months, Will will have disappeared to university, and in a couple of years, so will Emma. It's like fate is mocking us, what might have been. You know, this is down to the uh, stress of finally moving house, don't you? You wish. Becky, please. Look, I want her back, Tony. She's part of our family. And now we've got our home. Haven't you two finished unpacking yet? I told you we should have gone to Houghton. Look at this stuff. I can't wear this. It's ancient. New house, new wardrobe. I need new clothes. Dream on. <laughs> so, how is it with you and your dog, eh? Still on after the holiday? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only it's not the same, is it, going on holiday with somebody? I mean, it's not like seeing them just once in a while. I wouldn't know he didn't come. You what? Work. Work? You've seen what he's like. His phone never stops ringing. Well, where is he now, then? Is he back in London, is he? He's got a few things to do at the golf club first, then yes. Oh. Cathy, love, now you know I'm not one to stick my nose in, but, well, all I can say is if I was a fella and you were my lass, I certainly wouldn't put work first. Betty, I don't know what you're trying to say, No, but... what I'm trying to say, love, is... I think he's married. And you've been on the other side of that sort of goings on to know there's nought at the end but grief. Betty, thanks for the warning. <sighs> oh, no. What's up? I'm not insured. I hope nice one. Never thought I'd be glad to see a dingle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't drive like that round here. It's dangerous. Oh, Mum, get a flipping life. You in. I'll have the police on to you if I catch you driving like that round here again. Like Kelly said, Viv, get a life. I'll see you in the pub later. Yeah, see you later. So you've missed the bus. What do you want me to do? Arrest the driver. Don't you recognise me? You're not one of them from Oasis, are you? From them wanted, dead or alive thingies. This is a wind-up, isn't it? OK, I'll give you a clue. Who are you looking for? Oh, a lass who looks like Sandra Bullock and cooks like Gary Rhodes. I usually get them the other way round. Right, that's it. I'm not moving till you promise to take me in. I can reverse. I'm giving myself up. I'm Sam Dingle. I've been on the run for ages. Theft and jumping bail. OK, get in. It's all right, miss, isn't it? Thanks for pointing it out. Hey, look, Jack, I don't know what to say. 
Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, you and Sarah, you, well, you've both been really good to Andy and me. I just think it's a shame. How was she this afternoon? Fine. Fine. She really intends screwing you for every penny, you know? Yeah, well, like Ned says, when she calms down. Trust me, Jack. I've talked to her. When she calms down, she's gonna think first, and then she's gonna screw you some more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hiya. I just spoke to Mandy on the phone earlier there, on my way. Vic and Terry couldn't even find their way back across the channel. Hardly think a trio of dingles is going to improve their prospects of a safe return. Well, you can always hope for a hijack to Cuba or something. Eric, I presume you keep champagne? No longer than I have to. Fancy joining me in a bottle, Viv? Well, I really can't think that there's anything to celebrate. Well, I can celebrate Mandy coming home and you can celebrate your last night of freedom. Sounds good to me. And as two teenagers have just instructed me to get a life, might as well start now. Champagne for table six. Champagne? Yes, for some unearthly reason, Paddy thinks that the return of the dingle from the other side of the world is something to celebrate. Why should it concern you? The only dingle you ever see these days is Marlon. Even Sam doesn't seem to be hanging around you much. That's because he's given himself up to the police. Yeah. Well, we were fed up with him hanging about at home. At least there'll be one less dingle in circulation for a while. They reckon he'll only get a fine. The man's a fugitive. He jumped bail. My bail. Ask me should throw away the key. If they ever cut you open, Eric, won't they be surprised to find your old heart? Uh. <laughs> we could always go and join Paddy in the wine bar. Oh, no. You said you'd drive. Well, he'll be on on his own. Trembling with anticipation over the return of Mandy. I just want to see him happy. Mm. He's been bad enough mooning around all over the place while she's been away. Imagine what it'd be like if they split up. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's hope she hasn't met a Bruce in Australia. Or a Sheila. <laughs> Uh, we all right to get another round in here, aren't we? Yeah, you'll have to wait, Roy. Um, now, that slugger, one with lime and one with that card, sir. Do you want an hand, Alan? Oh, please. Uh, are you sure? Yeah. What are you having, mate? He's coping really well, isn't he? Oh, it's done it before. And then, what happened with Linda? Oh, yeah. Everyone seems to feel dead sorry for him. I forgot I've lost a brother and sister this year. I'm going through an hard time and all, Cal. I could really do something to talk to and that sometimes, you know. Could I have some icing that if it's no bother, please? Yeah, no problem. Well, maybe you just ran off to Amsterdam just to make me jealous, you know, just like that affair with Terry. Oh, sure. Me, he gets back at. Terry, he goes with. Yeah, the phrase double standards does seem to apply here. So what do you stay together for, then? The kids? Oh, for the shop. Oh, we have to make a go of it. If we sold it and split the proceeds, so we both end up in some dump, we no job. Yeah, but to stay together when you're like this, is there nothing there? We're not even friends. Never mind anything else. Oh, Vic's not a passionate man, and that's what I need, a bit of excitement. A man who knows how to treat a woman, someone who makes me feel desirable. Someone who buys me champagne. I think you've just described to me my ideal woman. You see, we do understand each other. I can tell you know how to treat a woman. Um, actually, I just meant that someone who buys you champagne. You mean me champagne? Yeah, uh, me champagne. <laughs> ah, Mr Dingle. Have trouble finding your file. Regular little Al Capone, isn't he, Sarge? Not answering bail is a very serious charge, Mr Dingle. That were our teeny's idea. Uh, you see, our already... Uh, save it for the magistrates in the morning. I'll hey, also answer the original charge of theft. And you can think yourself lucky I'm not doing you for obstructing a police officer in the course of his duty. I didn't. I'm obstructing his car. Can I make my phone call now? Go ahead. Uh. 
It's private. Don't push it. Lisa! It's Sam. Yeah, yeah, just like you said. Can you put that spaghetti on now? Chips? Great. I I'll see you in... Hang on. A any chance of a lift back? You're going nowhere, lad. Eh? Right. Let's see if we can find you a cell for the night. What? About life, girlfriend, stuff like that, you know. Younger of two sons, my brother Colin went to Cambridge, starred in the footlights, and now he's got a Porsche with double barrel girlfriend. And what about you? Boring. Mm. Never stayed in one job in one place. Uh, first girlfriend, Helen West, broke my heart, and I've never been able to stay with anybody since. Until you met Mandy. Yeah, Mandy. She likes a lot. That's it. Oh, come on. Do you think she sees anything else in me? Now you and Vic. Now that's the real question. If he came back with a hat and corks, could you fall in love all over again? I have told you. I haven't had a snog in months. Oi! Put the light back on! I don't like the dark! Will you shut your gob, you big fairy? Otherwise, I'll get them to put you in this cell with me. This is Vic. He doesn't know I know about it. Glenn Hoddle. <laughs> See if the girls are asleep. I'll be back in a minute. Heard you get up. Sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. I've got to get Jerry back, Tony. I know it's hard. But Emma's just beginning to settle. I'll make her understand. I'll bring her up. Doesn't have to be Emma's problem. We can manage, me and you. Paddy! Oh. Wake up! Uh, uh, uh... Viv, you've still got that old killer touch. <laughs> 